Hello, I'm Luke Darcy. Welcome to Access All Areas, brought to you by OPSM. The Hawks look ominous as the main premiership fancy. The Swans were sensational on the Crows' home turf. The Eagles well and truly did the job. But Damien Barrett, as I welcome you, it was the Dockers who were the talk of the football world after their absolute smashing of North Melbourne yesterday. Yeah, they were, Darcy, weren't they? They've got the best coach in the competition, the best coach by a mile, in my estimation, Darcy, and it's why they're still alive. A live premiership hope in 2012. As remotely... Uh, impossible as that sounded recently. Hard to argue with your assessment of Ross Lyon. He's just a gun and a coach on fire. The pressure was just unbelievable, Damien. Sitting there watching the way these young, unheralded players that have been in the system for a little while, Clancy, Pierce, DeBoer, Michael Walters was uh, just about uh, over and out yeah, of his career and they've got him back in, but this is what I expected Geelong to do to Fremantle. Just bully them, be too tough around the contest. It was the reverse. They're unbelievable. The way they went about this, Dust, right from the, the first bounce, as you say, did you expect them to win this game by doing this? Because I didn't. <laughs> I expected them to have a chance in the game, but not through these sort of tactics. You know, it's interesting, in the last 24 hours, having spoken to a, a few players that have been out on the field against Fremantle in the last few weeks, and the word coming back is that they are as hard a contested team. You come off the ground against Fremantle now just feeling as though you've... Uh, been in a street fight, and yep. that's the way Ross Lyon has always coached. It's the yep. way he wants his side to play. I didn't think he was going to be able to do it so quickly. 14 home and away wins, and then to come over the MCG. I mean, Fremantle couldn't get within 10 goals of mm. a bottom side in their last 10 years uh, over, at, let alone a, a big fight. And you know what it did? It put the Cats, they were shell shocked under this perceived pressure. And for the things happening in this game that we haven't seen for ages, Corey Enright, no issue with his uh, commitment there, but he doesn't drop marks like that. No, he doesn't. I haven't seen Jimmy Bartell fumble for 10 years, and Look at this passage of play. Over to Corey, goes back to Enright, and Jimmy Bartell just half takes his eye off the ball because you feel as though you're going to get tackled. It was pressure like you hadn't seen before. And this all happens in the space of two minutes. Matty Scarlett kicks one out of bounds on the mm. four. We can't believe it. Uh, the next one comes from Lonigan, out of bounds on the four again. It was just mistake after mistake after mistake, but it was all on the back of uh, the Fremantle pressure. Does this, this dynasty's over now, isn't it? This, this three premierships out of the previous five years, obviously going out in, in round one this week in, in, in 2012, it, it's finished. They, they can't regroup and win a flag in two. Look, two it always days. had to come to an end at some stage, and, and you're always reluctant with Geelong because, I, and this is what was happening at quarter time. I haven't got a big problem with this, but when you're a big final, you haven't got time for niceties. You're pointing the finger going, yep. you're supposed to be there. Why isn't that happening? And uh, not as though it was a total breakdown. They were trying to get the, the ship back on track. But look, I, I think with Geelong, yeah, they're not going to be the dominant force that they have been for the last decade. And you can't keep it up forever, but a bit like the Sydney Swans. I yeah. wouldn't expect them to go all the sure. way back down. I, I, I could see them reloading. They'll hang around the lower reaches of the eight for a couple of years and regroup then. Is that they're a good enough club. They've got a good enough system. They've got enough good young players around uh, to actually do that uh, a bit sooner than yep. you'd possibly think. Mark's inside 50 in the first quarter, Dharma. It was 10-0. And this is Matty Pavlich's first goal of the game. Uncontested marks. The setup that they had, I mean... The word structure we talk about all the time, but Ross Lyon, he could not have orchestrated any better. To get Pavlich one-on-one, -on -one, mm. as often as he did, Lonigan there just got absolutely monstered by a superstar player. It was just incredible to watch. How did he orchestrate that space around him, Dars? Given that Geelong has played as a team so well down, down back for well, six years. At the other end of the game, at the other end of the ground, I should say, uh, the, the, Tom Hawkins did not get a one-on-one -on -one contest for mm. the entire game. So... He has taught his midfielders the perfect time of when to roll back and he's taught them the perfect time of when to engage their half-backs. Now, normally, they're so good Scarlet, they're so good uh, Bartell at sifting off, but they felt so under pressure right from the start, they didn't feel as though they could leave their man and it was just a combination of pressure, structure and uh, the, you know, the perfect final played uh, by Fremantle. Geelong's out, so too is North Melbourne. The two teams eliminated after week one. Um, it was this game that they lost, North Melbourne, to West Coast. More about how bad North was, Darce, or how good West Coast was? Well, look, I think uh, I'm going to focus more on how good West Coast yeah. were. And then I thought North Melbourne had a great year. I didn't expect them to make the eight, so anything was a bonus. I don't think any side would have got near West Coast uh, at a any home side. And, uh, Hawthorne wouldn't Hawthorne have included. Them. No way. They okay. wouldn't have got near them the way they played. So let's have that in perspective. It's the biggest home ground advantage. And sometimes on a 30-degree day, when a final is gone, the air goes out of the tyres and you can get blown away. But one of the things I want to focus on was when it did go out, just the lack of pressure. Now, here are the tackle numbers across the first week of the finals. You expect 70-plus in the final, you know, regularly. Even Geelong, yep. you know, fighting their way back at 86 tackles. The Crows had a disappointing day, but the West Coast and North Melbourne, I mean, the term bruise-free football mm. is the one that we use in that sort of game. You don't expect it in a final. Yes, it was a bigger ground at Subiaco, but, uh, I mean, West Coast 
that is the best preparation to come over here and take on Colin. Not an injury. No one uh, got tackled at all in the game. They are in great shape for this next week. Who stood up most in, in that game? I mean, Nat Nui and Cox were good again, but was it maybe Jack Dowling, who's putting together a very good career so young? How important is recruiting in AFL football? To get hold of this man, pick 26. I want to talk about that in a second as well, but... His shape, his running ability and his frame is almost the perfect size, I reckon, for the modern forward. He's a sensational runner. He's a brilliant uh, contested mark. He's got a bit of that hard, nasty edge. Yep. And he can finish and kick goals. He was enormous. And when it was there to be one at the start, uh, he was the player. They just didn't have a match-up that could go anywhere near him. Does he went high 20s in the draft. And I know we keep raising this. At the end of 2010 is when he went. How did he go so low, Does You had a lot to do with him at the AAS, didn't you? Well, I spent uh, 12 months uh, you know, spending time with him up in Canberra. And, and you hear hear all these talks about stories about uh, sides being put off from selecting him because there were some disciplinary issues. And I think he might have had one incident as a young teenager. But uh, my impression of him was that he was just a ripping young guy. Mm. Great character, great leader, real presence, self-assured without being cocky. And uh, I mean, if people have overlooked him, West Coast have been given. What a gift. They get Nata Nui. He's not going to go anywhere yep. for the next 15 years. Along with uh, Jack Darling, their future just looks sensational on the back of two players uh, alone. What about uh, North's uh, scoring options? Uh, Drew Petrie had, had a really good year, Darcy, and kicked 58 goals for the year. Just the, the stark contrast, though, between his performances in games against top eight teams, as we see nine games there, nine goals, that's obviously an average of one a game, against the bottom 10 teams, 14 games, 49 goals, three and a half goals uh, a game. What's it tell you? I, I know stats sometimes don't illustrate totally a guy's impact but does that say something to you about Drew? It does it tells us a little bit about where North Melbourne are at as well I think uh, you know it comes to a big game they channel the ball through Drew Petrie they're expecting him you know to take uh, five or six marks and kick a big bag of goals you need more options and Robbie Tarrant improved a bit Hanson improved a bit but I don't think to the point where you know they really had to focus on them when they played against the big side so yep. I love Drew Petrie I'm a massive fan uh, a bit of coincidence and a bit of a uh, bit of a damning stat uh, there about that graphic. And just before we leave North um, is it better, would it be better for them to miss the finals than be subjected to that smashing No, yesterday? no, no. You always got to make a final yep. demo and you learn a lot from that. They got the experience. They got the preparation. They got the build-up. It's up. a bad experience. A, a bad one. And that'll stay with them for a long period of time. But I reckon they're a little bit ahead of where I thought this year. And I think yep. they'll continue to improve hey, next year. Lots of tweets coming through. Uh, AFL underscore triple A if you want to send us a tweet. We've got a message from Matty who says, Defence wins finals demo. Uh, just look at the Swans. A lack of one opens you up. See Pies and ruse and uh, fairly uh, accurate comment that from Matty. The big defence has always been the form that we've spoken about and uh, we saw it again the first week of the final. Yeah, we did. In this game here uh, on, on this Saturday afternoon, Adelaide uh, Swans. Um, does the Swans were out. A, a very key cog to what they've been about all year. Heath Grundy with that suspension from last week, yet they didn't miss a beat. Yeah. Teddy Richards just went again to another level. We didn't think there were any many levels left with what he's done. Uh, Ross Lyon deserves the plaudits that he's getting as uh, arguably the best coach of the year. Well, I think John Longmire should uh, as well because uh, to be able to you know, turn Ted Richards and develop him even further, uh, you said uh, Lewis Roberts-Thompson, to turn him into a forward and then say, hey, by the way, in a big final, now yeah. we need you to Come stand out. up over at Amy uh, Stadium and, uh, and play as well as they did. They were just uh, absolutely sensational. There's the a forward line yeah. as well, Dame, at the other end. I want, I want to speak about that because uh, sometimes it happens in a final where you know, so much focus is on the contest that everyone pushes up and mans their man. But if he's orchestrated this John Longmire as a genius, this is the first goal of the game. Was it Paddy's paddock almost yeah. does? Like a... Was it possibly a, a real plan and focus for the Swans? There's sometimes a lot of myths in football, and I, and I think that was one a little bit at times, even the Pagans. Paddy, I think that just happened. So much focus on Kerry. He got up the ground, out the back came Brett Ellison. Now, uh, there's part design and part uh, the way the game's evolved, but if you can get Lewis Jetta running back, no one in the game mm. will get near uh, chasing him down. He was sensational. Is Lewis Jetta the Usain Bolt of AFL? Well, uh, before that week, we thought it was either he or Paddy Dangerfield. These are two of the genuine speedsters in the game. Well, one's Blake and one's Bolt. Yeah, I think uh, that's uh, uh, Bolt out in front. Blake tries to run him down. Great chasing effort from Paddy Dangerfield. And that might have stuck in Lewis Jetta's mind because Lewis, uh, he's just sparked his interest. He said, OK, I'll chase you down. What a rundown this is because Dangerfield is just unbelievably powerful. Lewis Jetta ran him down. Brilliant to, to watch those two going uh, head to head. That's a sad story to emerge out of this game in a footy sense. Uh, Benny McGlynn is going to miss the remainder of the year with a, a hamstring. As we know, he was able, unable to make it uh, for a spot in the 2 8 Hawthorne Premiership winning team. That's him there at the end of the game, really emotional and tears rolling down the eye. And, and John Longmire's coach comes and, and comforts him. It's a stark 
contrast, isn't it? Just that emotion there. To the one we're about to see from the same situation, um, Brendan Whitecross, Hawthorne player on Friday night. Um, this is the singing the, the Swans song after the game, and Glenn there is, is distressed, isn't he, given that he's now going to miss a second crack at a premiership. Whitecross from Friday night, Darce. Um, has a smile on his face, despite being told only moments earlier than that that his knee is requiring a reconstruction. He's out for the year and some time on top of that. Look, uh, there's no right or wrong in this either, Darren, yeah. by the way. We're all wired differently and uh, I can understand the heartbreak and the despair for Ben Glynn and the emotion that uh, poured out. But uh, equally, I admire uh, White Cross. And we hear from Mark Evans, the footy manager, that they had a chat in the rooms and he, he made a conscious decision to say, I don't want to come out forlorn looking mm. and have any effect on my teammates. I want to uh, potentially show them that, uh, you know, I could come back on the ground if required. So that takes great mental strength, and I reckon it's a real sign of uh, the group and Hawthorne and where they're heading. Do you reckon it's a result of, or an, a um, reaction to what happened with Brent Guerrero the previous week when he was slamming chairs at the end of the game I when, think when it's his just season was over? Personality type stuff. Yeah. We're all, as I said, some people were, you know, show your emotions a little more clearly. Uh, others uh, are able to contain it, and that's what uh, White Cross did. Sam Mitchell, I think, uh, needs a special highlight yep. uh, today. And uh, look at his uh, work against Collingwood in recent seasons. Here's his past. Uh, six games, uh, 31 disposals. Uh, we haven't got on there, but averages seven clearances a game. This is over the last 10 uh, games against Collingwood. He, he's, uh, he's almost unstoppable and untaggable. They tried with Blair, went yep. with him for three quarters and just wasn't able to, uh, to keep up with a little genius. Who would you play on him, Dust? Tell you what, stop him. Uh, look, uh, Cameron Ling had uh, a great history yep. on uh, on a lot of players that everyone else thought were untaggable. Yeah. I don't think there is a Cameron Ling running around in the AFL at the moment, but I, I would find someone in this prelim final to uh, to try and stop him. I, I don't is, know. Is he as good as ever, Mitchell? By the way, given he's, been, he's yeah. been so good anyway for a lumber of years. He's been doing it for a decade, yeah. and for some reason. We don't seem to rate him as highly as we do a few of the others, but mm. uh, you know somehow you've got to try and stop him if you are to beat Hawthorne in a prelim final. You always take the players' side in these match review Not panel. always. You always uh, in these match review panel incidents. Have a look here. Nick Maxwell on Popolo off the ball. I've been quoted uh, today in the Herald Sun saying that I, I think he, he, he should get off. I think he will get suspended yep. because the match review panel have now got a set of uh, legal terms that they have got no option apart from to but use. Does that, that left Popolo with a, with a bloody nose and, and, and by all reports a cracked, broken nose. Off the ball. I mean, have a look at it. It's well, that hasn't been confirmed that he's broken his well, nose. Well, he's got a bloody nose as a result of that incident. You've and his from... rough head on doors top of screen in the highlight. Well, the rough head one, I, I can't see where the contact takes place. And I think uh, pretty easy to defend Jared Rufford. And that would be very surprised if he does. And Maxwell, the thing he's got going against him is that uh, there's high contact. Mm. The player has left the ground with a blood nose. They're all the parameters that the match review yep. panel has to discuss. So, under that, He's absolutely going to get suspended. So he'll miss a semi-final. Which, to me, is a massive penalty and is a tragedy. I like to look at football and think of the way the game was played when I was a kid and the way you wanted it adjudicated. This one here is being thrown up for the match review panel demo and uh, no issue here. I mean, you've got to be able to contest the no footy. No issue. Well, he, he's trying to take Did he a mark. contest the footy? Yeah, absolutely. Mark, to mark taken mark. by His Scotty. His hands Mar weren't in the motion to take a mark, does? If you frame every bit of play demo down frame by frame and stop it, we hear about alternative. Yeah, maybe he could have pirouetted mid-air, flipped himself on his back and broken the world high jump record and tried to avoid contact. This is a 360-degree game, Damien, that has contact as part of it. The trial by video was brought in for punches in the head, for people who stomp on people, for kicks behind the play. Every week now we slow them down. And I feel for Mark Fraser. He's got to sit there. He's been given all these parameters. Uh, and he hasn't got a up. choice. Because, you know what? You don't Maxwell, always have to take the player's side, mate, does. I don't always. But you've got players yes, who are you going to miss a fight. It's your whole life. That can change a $25 million business. Stevie Johnson missed Geelong lose by 17 points. He bumped someone who got winning and got up and played the game and he missed a final. We might see Stevie J again in the final. That is a tragedy. We can sit around and go, oh, let's, uh, yeah, maybe he had an alternative. We need to look at it because it just, it, you know what, it makes me furious well, that players miss games. The solution, don't do it. Don't, okay. don't, don't knock him. Don't lay a bump. Okay. Well, let's... Off the ball, Darcy. It was 20 minutes, five minutes off the ball. When someone's running past you, Damien, we have teammates running to each other, knock each other out. Should we start suspending teammates for innocuous contact? Hey, Would you like to see that? I'm getting a bit I'm scared. Get You're getting really worked I'm up. I'm club you in a minute. <laughs> hey, Nathan Buckley was pretty worked up too yeah. on the weekend. Uh, probably over the host broadcaster, just not rolling footage enough so we can see a replay. Have a look here. He requests that he's having the screen, wants to watch a replay, roll it on. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon that's funny because uh, he's been in the television before, but on, he knows <laughs> eventually they've got to roll it on. That's the signal. He says, enough of me. He wanted to see something that he couldn't see, and uh, get on your bucks, a little bit of humour. I'm not sure that uh, he's going to have so much humour when he looks at this. 
Now, I reckon the umpires had a poor night on yep. Friday night. No other way to... And I, I don't like talking about umpiring decisions, but Bucks had had enough, and I think he might have just said, Shane... Yep. Uh, Shane McInerney, any danger of uh, giving one of the black and white? We just know the AFL does not like that type of behaviour. I think it's at the real low e- lower end of what they're going to do with him, but they will be looking at it. Damo, time for our APSN fan face-off competition. And this is the last week you can enter for your chance to win the grand final tickets. Here are the details. OPSM is giving you and a friend the chance to win the ultimate 2012 Toyota AFL Grand Final experience with the OPSM Fan Face-Off. Download the OPSM app and share your fan face to win. And last week's winner is Arthur Densley from Adelaide. A lot of fun this one, Damo. Giving it to his Port Adelaide mate. Uh, well done, Arthur. Uh, the grand final tickets uh, coming your way. But that's the uh, the Malls Balls over there in uh, Rundle Mall in Adelaide. Is it? Yeah. You're, you're so, always hometown. That's where we used to meet as kids, uh, Damo. <laughs> meet a few girls over there in uh, Rundle Mall. Hey, our OPSM poll question this week. Head to our Facebook page to register your vote. Who should get the forward pocket spot in the All Australian team? Stephen Milne already bets. We'll have the result of the poll on Friday. Today's access all areas with uh, Damo. Who do you think, Damo? Uh, Milne for me, Das. 56 goals, third year in a row of 50-plus goals on the season. Just felt he's more consistent over the course of the 23 uh, weeks of the home and away season than, than Betts. But I know you can't comment. No comment. You will be selecting for it. For me, yeah. Look forward to that. It's going to be very, very tough. It is every year. Hey, let's look forward to the two finals. Uh, Adelaide and Fremantle at home, Damo. Who's going to win that one? I'm going for uh, Frio. Adelaide out in straight sets. Uh, I think the Dockers uh, uh, will not be good enough to travel back to Perth, back over to Adelaide. They've been sensational. Adelaide in a very close game for me. Yep. Uh, Collingwood going to get home over West Coast here? I'm going for West Coast on the back of what they did yesterday uh, to just keep rolling for at least one more week. Collingwood out in straight sets. Collingwood for me in a close game. Okay. I think uh, I just can't see them going out in straight sets. Okay. Two ripping finals. Looking forward to it. Thank you, uh, Damo. Hey, Richo uh, will join you on Friday. Access all areas. Look forward to that. So make sure you click back onto afl.com.au for Damo and Richo on Friday. As we say goodbye, though, today we'll leave you with the best moments of 2000. 2012, according to OPSM's Did You See That? 2012 was the season when we all saw Fremantle to this to West Coast. Got it! And got it! And rookie Michael Taylor slot through his first goal. What about that for your first goal in footy? There were some clips you may not have seen. Flying fans. Just can't pay that, homie. No, Sorry. Play on. Play on. The Church of Giantology. <laughs> Bit of a fitness workout. And Eagles. No, seriously, actual eagles. The top clips you missed from a year of ball flinging fun. This is Did You See That? Did you see that? Clip one. In round 16, North trounced the Blues. And did you see Thomas kick this one from an impossible angle? It's the impossible goal. Lindsay Thomas drives a nail into Carlton. Clip two. Back in round nine, Richmond School Hawthorne at the G. But did you see Cyril Rioli using playground tactics? You can't teach that. This week, Tyler Wall. Next week, Duck Duck Goose. Clip three. In round 17, Eddie Betts was unstoppable against the Bulldogs. Did you see this? On the left boot, takes them on. How about that? This. Off hands, bits from the boundary. Got it bending. Unbelievable, Eddie. Yes, you are very, very good. <laughs> Clip four. <laughs> Round 18 might not have been Ladies Week, but did you see Revolts give the ladies a show? Getting some wolf whistles from the crowd behind me here. They're pretty happy that the field of boys have lost their guernseys. Oh, oh they're going crazy now. Off. They've looked up from their Kindles. Yep, they've stopped reading Fifty Shades of Grey. That's right. Uh, so a bounce on the outer side. <laughs> oh, it's too much for him. Clip five. Carmichael Hunt secured Gold Coast's first win for 2012 with this after the siren magic. Is he the hero that the Suns believe he is? To the jubilation of everyone. Look at the jubilation. What a goal. Nearly everyone. Clip six. Sydney's 2012 success has been attributed to many things. Its players, its coaches, its supporters. But did you see this guy?
He's been their lucky charm all year. If he belongs to you, please pick him up from the Swans head office. To vote for your favourite Did You See That Moment of 2012 and to have the chance to win a pair of Oakley sunglasses valued at $159.95, go to afl.com.au slash didyousseethat.